Hello, I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York. Welcome to One to One. Some of us can remember a time when tennis was a sport primarily for the white and wealthy. When kids learned to play on their backyard tennis courts, at fancy camps and private schools, and at the country clubs frequented by their parents. But organizations like the National Junior Tennis League changed all that. Founded in 1969 by tennis legend Arthur Ashe and Charlie Passarell, his teammate at UCLA, its affiliates have brought the sport to young people of all races and economic backgrounds with free and low-cost lessons and team opportunities. New York's Junior Tennis and Learning was founded in 1971 and brings the sport and an array of educational services to an estimated 75,000 students each year. Deborah Antoine has been president and CEO since 2010, and she will tell us how she turned her love of the game into a career of teaching and advocating for the less advantaged. Welcome. Good morning. So how did New York Junior Tennis and Learning get started and why? Well, our legendary founder is Lewis Skip Hartman, and it was his belief, working with Arthur Ashe in 1971, that we really needed um, a place for children in New York City to play tennis and to learn all of the skills and of character and um, of character building that children who have benefited from tennis all their lives also had. Now, was Skip Hartman, was he a tennis player? I assume he was. Yeah, Skip was a tennis player and um, loved the game. And Arthur Ashe, obviously, was a world-class champion. And together, they envisioned this, what has now become a very large, the largest of its kind organization in New York City and in the United States. Now, in 1971, uh, there probably were not many black, Latino, Asian, or Native American children nationwide who were involved in the sport of tennis, and probably not many low-income kids either. Was the, prop, was the program really aimed at them? Arthur Ashe certainly believed that tennis could change lives. It changed his life, and he knew that it could change other kids' lives. And so it very much was built upon a premise of being there for all kids. So tell me about <coughs> some of the services you pro provide. I know you have something called the Community Tennis program. Tell me about that. Sure. So we reach kids at all different levels. So kids who've never held a racket before and all the way up progression up through our advanced tournament team where we have kids with national rankings who compete around the country. Um, but the basic premise is that let's expose children to a sport that they can love. And so we are in 85 locations around New York City. These include community centers, uh, schools, where we have a number of after-school programs, comprehensive after-school programs, um, public parks, and anywhere where we can gather children with some tennis equipment and a good coach and um, some really fabulous lessons about how to get in the sport. So, so some of the, at the schools, would they, nest, would you be, would they be learning uh, to play tennis in the gym or would they be at probably not at not tennis courts at, at the public schools, but are some of these locations actual outdoor tennis courts? Sure, well some of our schools of course have courts, but because of this huge USTA 10 and under initiative, I mean we're able to teach tennis just about anywhere, especially to elementary school kids. And so we teach in auditoriums, we teach in school backyards, we teach in the cafeteria. So all we need is a net and balls and, and we're and ready kids, to go and right. kids and so we're are, ready to go. Are these primarily after school programs? Primarily after school and all summer long. So um, in our signature after school programs are a combination of tennis, which is both a theme and an activity, um, nutrition, healthy living, which is key to everything in terms of character development and sport. We teach character development in and of itself along with academic support. So it's a very rich environment for children every school day from 3 to 6 p.m. and then all summer long. So how do you get the children into the program? Do you go and talk about that and, and recruit and students sign up? How does that work? Yeah, so for the most part, um, students sign up for all of our community-based tennis programs and we're in every community district in the in the city of new york so right now you can go to our website and sign up for a free tennis program this spring 
and this would be in the after school hours and then we'll run summer programs for our after school programs we are largely funded by the city of new york through the department of community and youth development and in this case um, these are schools that we compete in a competitive rfp and then once we win the award we we run these programs in the schools throughout the city mm -hmm. now in 38 school-based locations tell me about a little more about the educational you know there's a tennis about the educational portion of the program you know, first of all you know tennis in and of itself is a learning environment it's a really smart sport and we know from a couple of places the USTA itself has done some comprehensive research about kids who play tennis and we know that they get more A's in school they spend more time doing homework they apply at greater rates to college and have higher acceptances and do well in college. So we know that all of the skills that are involved in, in growing your tennis game are also growing your character skills. So the, the ability to, to persist, um, the, the discipline that it takes. We just had the graduation of our early morning tennis program where kids for all winter long were coming from 6 to 8 a.m on Saturday and Sunday mornings. The discipline of that is, a, is an amazing character education tool. And so we, we do that as a way of really bringing kids in. The other reason that tennis is a smart sport is we know that it actually encourages the growth of the brain. There are neuroscientists that have looked at tennis in particular. And tennis is a sport, it's not repetitive, right? You have an opponent, you have conditions, you have wind, you have fans, you have, um, your own mind and your own effort, your own attitude, and your mind is constantly adjusting. It's with a mind-body adjustment um, every stroke that you're hitting. And in and of itself, it's growing the brain. It's working faster. It's pumping oxygen. It's allowing you to make decisions in the moment. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Now, you have, you have a program that focuses on kids who are 10 and under. Uh, we actually work with children from ages 6 to 18, uh, so from kindergarten through high school. And, um, and so the kids that are, you know, the younger ones, we focus on the entry level, beginning tennis. So what do you teach, uh, for a kindergartner, what do you teach a kindergartner about tennis? Well, the most important thing is, and this underlies everything we do, is that it's got to be fun. And it's only fun if you can actually rally the ball back and forth over a net. And so within an hour, we can teach the youngest child to actually, with the equipment that's now child-sized, and the appropriate, to rally. to rally. And so they have fun. It's a small court. They hit the ball back and forth. They learn to play games. They learn to score. And they learn that every point matters and that it's fun. Now, the community tennis program, is that completely free, or are there any fees involved? You know, everything that we do at New York Junior Tennis and Learning is completely free to, to the end user. Um, there's, small, there's a small exception with our advanced tournament team where there are some travel fees, um, but, you know, 99% of the children benefit from totally free programming. And with the smaller kids, I understand you use a different kind of ball and a different, a smaller racket, I would think. Yeah, so you can imagine teaching tennis to little ones with a ball that's flying up and it's bouncing way too high. Um, we have now specialized balls um, that don't bounce very high. We have the child size racket. And so it's very easy to also teach the proper stroke production. But again, we're not about producing world champions, although that can happen and we have um, many children who have national rankings. Um, the real benefit is that kids will use tennis as a means um, to do better in school, um, to build better lives for themselves going forward. Now tell me about the advanced tennis training. So in this pipeline of starting with kids who have just pick up, picked up a racket for the very first time, all the way through, so we, we build in um, inter-school tournaments throughout the year, so kids are learning to compete. And, um, and I, I Even for the younger kids? Even for the younger kids. And, you know, field trips are really important. And, and so playing with one another, meeting kids from other schools, it's all meeting kids from other cultures. It's all part of the learning experience. And so as some kids exhibit real prowess for the game and real skill, and, and, and we encourage all of our kids to try out for the advanced tournament team, um, then those kids, you know, that becomes, you know, m most of those folks go on to play college tennis 
and, um, and some of them go on to become professional tennis players. In that vein, tell me about some of uh, your ones who have gone on to, to earn national rankings or whatever and to play professionally. Well, you know, um, I'm thinking of a young man who actually won the national spelling contest who is in our community tennis program. He has a little brother. Oh, he, really? <laughs> yeah, he has a little brother that is on our advanced tournament team. And um, both of them aspire to having a really great life. And so, you know, one may make it through the, and both will go to college. There's no doubt about that. In fact, every member of um, that stays with us through high school. And most of our programs are elementary and middle school, but the kids who stay on with us in our community and advanced tennis programs through high school, every single one of our young people has gone on to college. And so that's really the outcome that we're always looking to measure. Mm -hmm. Now, many of them go on and they play college tennis, and several go on and, you know, they compete um, uh, for a while or become professional tennis pros, um, but most of them go on to having really good jobs. Now, Serena and Venus Williams have dominated women's tennis for years now. Uh, do you find that they had a big impact on interesting young people of color in the game of tennis? I think their impact is inestimable. Um, if you visit any one of our uh, community sites, after school programs, and you ask who your favorite tennis player is, you're going to hear the name Serena and Venus more often than any other name. And, um, and because they've been such an enduring force in tennis for so many years and continue to be such a role model for kids, it's been fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even so, I mean, and even with programs like the National Junior Tennis League, I would estimate, I mean, just from, uh, I used to watch the tennis matches more than I do, but just when I see them, I would estimate that maybe 98% of professional tennis players are white. Why do you think there's so few people of color in professional tennis? Well, it's certainly changing, and um, you know, organizations like NJTL, the national chapter of which we are a member, are doing an amazing job of bringing kids in at a very early age into the sport. And these big outreach programs that serve as a way of attracting many thousands of kids of very diverse backgrounds are just so important for identifying young and emerging talent. So I think this is very much changing over the years. And certainly of the children we serve, 90% um, are black and Hispanic kids. Um, Asian kids um, all over the city of New York and um, so it certainly wouldn't appear to you <laughs> that um, that those demographics were, were so you're, different you're than certainly that. creating at least a pipeline that's going to look different that's over correct time. and I think it's changing I think it's very much changing as you go up through the college levels and into you know high school college and beyond I think we're going to see a big change we're going to take a short break but we'll be back with more with Deborah Antoine, President and CEO of New York Junior Tennis and Learning, after this message. Welcome back to One to One. I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York, and I'm talking with Deborah Antoine, President and CEO of New York Junior Tennis and Learning. What would be the typical, what's the typical route uh, that a young person who's interested in a professional career in tennis, what's the typical route like? You know, the typical route is um, probably a child that gets identified in a, in a private club um, as having some significant talent and, uh, you know, sort of gets signaled out and then finds a pathway from there. Okay, okay. Um, Tell me about the Cary Lead Center. The Cary Lead Center for Tennis and Learning is an amazing public-private partnership with the City of New York to build a first-class quality tennis community education center in, in the Bronx. Park in the Bronx. 
It's a world-class facility. In fact, it won a design award under Mayor Bloomberg for excellence in design. It's a testament to the community of the South Bronx um, in its integrity and in its statement about tennis and learning, because that's what it's all about. So there are beautiful classrooms and community rooms in the center for the community and for the many thousands of children who will use the center. And how many courts are we talking about? So we have venues? 22 courts. Um, two of them are stadium courts that seat hundreds of people for tournaments that will, we spoke earlier about tournaments and how our kids play inter-school tournaments. Well, it will also be for um, tournaments that are citywide, that are regional, that are state. And in fact, we have a 20-year history of running a professional um, tournament in the and Bronx. Now, it's under construction now? It, it's going to open on June 15th of 2015. Um, we're just uh, about to do that. And it's, um, we're, it's been a 10-year-long dream. It started um, with uh, the parents of Carrie Leeds, for whom the center is named, and really with the willpower of Skip Hartman, chairman, founder of NYJTL, and a very dedicated board of directors. It's a reality. A 20, it's a $26.5 <coughs> million facility. Where did the money for that come from? Yeah, so $15.5 million came from the city of New York, and the balance of that came from individual donors. So there are more than 500 people who have made a contribution to have this center get up and going. Okay, so opening in June. Yes. Now, there, there are public tennis courts all over the city. I think there are about 600. Um, but tennis permits are expensive. I mean, the last time I checked, uh, it was $200 for the season. Do, do any of your kids play on the public courts, and do they get a discount? So all of our kids play on public courts. And in fact, Carrie Leeds Center is, in fact, a public facility um, in this public-private partnership. And so none of our children pay. Um, so NYJTL obtains the permits for, for teaching kids on courts, city courts. And so none of these fees are passed along to children. How is, how is we talked about the funding for the, uh, <clears throat> for the Cary Lead Center. Uh, how does your organization, New York Junior Tennis and Learning, how is it funded? Well, our biggest funder is the city of New York through the Department of Youth and Community. Um, and uh, that funds all of our comprehensive after-school programs. These are our signature programs of tennis, nutrition, academic support and education. And, um, and then the balance of our funding comes from the private sector. So we run a couple of fundraising events every year. Um, we have a number of very, very generous supporters. And then we have, you know, just it's so important that people understand that every gift counts. And so um, we have, you know, thousands of folks who support our programs. You're a tennis player yourself. How did you get into <clears throat> playing tennis? You know, I didn't start till I was in my mid-30s. Uh, three daughters, they were getting pretty good. The tennis pro uh, said to me one day, I think they get some of this talent from you. And uh, the next week I was out with sneakers and <clears throat> sold on the game. Do you compete? I do compete. In fact, um, you know, I compete in my age group. I, I, um, I love the game and I love you know, the competition, the social com camaraderie, um, the social networking that I make um, with every game that I play. And it's the same um, principle of, of competition that I think works so well for our children. And that is winning and losing is a great learning experience. It's like chess. So if you and I are equally you know, that basically equally talented. Today you might win and tomorrow I might win. And so when children win and lose and win and lose, they're constantly learning about themselves, the game, and, you know, strategic thinking and all of those things that will help them persist and be confident. We tell every child, there are two things you can always control, your effort and your attitude. Mm -hmm. And as adults, mm -hmm. we are mindful to remember that as well. You started out as an English teacher. <clears throat> How did you come to run this huge tennis program? Oh gosh, it's such a long story, but uh, it started 30 years ago. And um, I started in, you know, my love is teaching um, and in helping 
those among us who are the least served. And so I started out by becoming an English teacher. I moved to curriculum development. And then I really thought I had a knack for program design and started something through my doctoral work at Columbia called the HOPE program, which is now celebrating its 30th um, anniversary year. And the HOPE program was um, teaching uh, homeless people how to get and find jobs. And so that's been the central theme. I moved on to become the president of another nonprofit, Perscolis. In fact, I was on the show uh, 16 years ago talking about that program, which is um, doing quite well. Um, and so, I, and then I, I did eight years as the senior vice president of, of PBS at Channel 13. So underlying everything was a, a love of education and teaching. And, um, and then out of nowhere, another call came and um, that I was on the top of a list of a search committee looking for a CEO for New York Junior Tennis and Learning. Tennis and education, like there's just nothing that could have been more perfect uh, for me, especially at this stage in my life when I think I have in some ways the most to give back. Mm -hmm. So you came directly from PBS. What was that experience like? How'd you like working for PBS? I love PBS, and I, I, I certainly love public television. And, um, and I, I loved knowing that the work that I was doing, which was to raise money for, for PBS programming, um, that the end result was that many, many children would benefit from you know, high quality um, educational television experiences. What are your goals for the near future? Um, you know, uh, we're, we're opening up um, uh, in just a few weeks at the Cary Lead Center. Um, there are 30,000 children within walking distance to that facility. And within concentric cir circles going outward, well, this will be a center for training and development. It's a place where all of our after-school educators will be, will be trained on our programs, where, our, where, all, where all of our community coaches will receive their advanced training. So it's a testament there about learning. And, you know, our goal is, and we've been working closely with all of the community organizations that um, surround Crotona Park and service children who live in that neighborhood. So we really want this to be a community center um, unlike any other, with, with the spirit and love of the game of tennis um, combined with all of the character education that we've talked about earlier and um, the academic support that helps children succeed. Former Mayor David Dinkins has been a big supporter uh, of tennis. He was, uh, he, he was the one who got the at the Tennis Center in uh, Queens. I don't know, what's, what's, the, what's the formal name of it? The National Tennis Center, the, the National, Billie Jean King the, National Center. The National Tennis Center. Is he involved, has he been in, involved at all with your kids? Mayor Dinkins has been such a fabulous resource. He's been a board member for many, many years. Um, he's an active board member. He, he, he comes, he talks to our children, he inspires them. I mean, he was out at a 6 a.m. tennis match. Uh, to see some of our kids playing and to talk with them about the importance of education in their lives. So we are, we are truly blessed. When you talk to young people who either are in your program or were formerly in your program and you meet up with them later, what do they tell you about the kind of impact that being in your program has had on their lives? You know, it's really um, heartwarming. Um, when, and, and they often come back uh, and they stay in touch because they've developed such a close relationship with us because um, they know that we really care about them. And that, that we, and it's not just about their tennis, that we really care about them and their futures. And so they're really proud to come back and tell us where they are and what they're doing and where they're working and when they have families. And in fact, we have, you know, folks who themselves were part of our community tennis programs 20, 30 years ago, and they're now bringing in their own children. So it become, and they're telling the stories again. Tell me about a little, we have a couple minutes. Tell me about your staff. Are they largely volunteers or you have certain paid staff? Who are they? So our, our staff now is almost now 400 
paid um, employees wow. of New York Junior Tennis and Learning. And um, about three quarters of them are, work part time because they're in our after school hours from 3 to 6 p.m. and then during the summer. And then a core group of, of um, full time um, administrative staff and um, site directors and so on. Um, and our, our staff um, are the most amazing group of people. I mean, they're, I, I say that they're paid employees, but they do this out of love of, the, of children. And um, any one of them, uh, and that, I think that's my deepest commitment to the children and to the staff because the, the opportunities for them to grow and learn are equally important. And so creating an environment whereby um, every staff member feels like he or she is continuing to learn and progressing and building his or her own career is also important. Okay. Well, I've learned about something new, yet another really great program uh, of services that the city offers to the kids here. Thank you so much. We're out of time. I want to thank Deborah Antoine, President and CEO of the New York Junior Tennis and Learning, for joining me today. If you'd like more information or would like to get involved with the organization, go to its website at nyjtl.org. For the City University of New York and One to One, I'm Cheryl McCarthy. If there are any people you'd like to hear from or topics you'd like us to explore, please let us know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016, or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.